and welcome back to the Middlemen podcast, where every week we unpack the latest in, in boxing. And I think, to be fair, Max, this week's big story has stirred the pot more than most. But we'll get on to that in a bit. You've had a very busy week. I want to hear about your week. Uh, pitch side photography, reporting on some massive Bucks games and big stadiums, backstage passes. Let's hear about your week. Uh, it's been a crazy one, mate. It is ever since I joined um, Cardiff Met Uni, it is one of the most talked about things uh, from a sporting perspective. Mo- most of the stuff we talk about is from a sporting perspective, um, being a, a sporting campus uh, here at King Coyd. So, yeah, we had Cardiff Clash, which is basically the most anticipated, the biggest rivalry the biggest we can come to, can, can even get to. In, in the whole of the UK, it probably was uh, the biggest game for Buck Super Rugby the other night. Um, and obviously, yeah, within my role, I had the opportunity to go down, help with a load of students um, who were on the course, uh, learning their craft, learning their trade uh, on a master's course of uh, sport broadcasting. So they were doing some photography with me. And yeah, we were literally, as you say, ringside and pitch side. We were pitch side the other night. Um, really, really come on. Used as a kind of a color camera, low angle camera that uh, that will show in the in the highlights that we cut to. Because obviously, you know, we set up in the gantry, and uh, I was down in the thick of it by by the touchline. Got maybe a bit too close at times. Uh, had the you never get too close. To, no, I got got a bit carried away. Had the lines on telling me to uh, take a <laughs> few really? steps back, but that's how it is. You know, is my first kind of experience. Um, with a camera that close to the action. So yeah, a bit carried away, but mate, what a game. Uh, just an absolute shame that we can get the result because Cardiff now in beat Cardiff Uni every time. So uh, yeah, I, I feel like a bad luck charm because that, that streak finally ended, finally ended in my first clash, but it was still a great experience. What was it like being the master with the apprentices? You were, you were kind of in charge of the camera and you had the students there shadowing you. That's, it's always been the other way around with, with the two of us. We've gone through uni together and have really kind of like earned, earned our stripes in journalism by looking up to people and shadowing people. What was it like being the one who was being shadowed? It's, it is a bit of a crazy thing because <laughs> only only six months ago uh, were we the kind of the students, the little padded ones. Like, <laughs> So for time to have just gone on like this and now... Um, these are guys that are probably older than me as well um, that I'm, you know, I wouldn't say I'm mentoring because, you know, uh, the team around me obviously helped them. we got like technician demonstrators who do a, a greater job than I. I'm, I'm only the intern, but, you know, I'm also used to to help these guys and, you know, kind of guide them on their way through their course. So, yeah, that was that was part of my role the other night as well. And it is just a crazy feeling. You know, you've got um, especially senior students. These guys are probably like double my age that I'm like helping with. But that's the thing, you know. I've I've got the experience, so that is that is where the value lies with it all. Um, and yeah, it's it's quite rewarding actually to kind of give these guys information. And obviously, you know, they have a, they have a passion for it as well. Otherwise, they wouldn't be on the course. So um, you know, they really appreciate uh, your help. So it's it's quite rewarding in that uh, respect too. For sure. And then the age the age thing as well. I think what I've learned is you you've always got to back yourself. And it doesn't matter if you're, you're speaking to someone older than you or younger than you. You've got to remind yourself that you're there for a reason you've been put in that place for a reason and that's why you're doing that job and it's sort of the same when I go and report on on football at any level but whether it's the Derby women and I'm speaking to I'm speaking to some of the players and they're like 17 18 it's so bizarre that you're older than them or or you're speaking to the captain who's who's in her early 30s it doesn't really matter what way around it is you're there for a reason you're doing your job and uh, that's what you got to remember is as a young journalist coming through would definitely be my advice but that that's that that was kind of the essence of my week as well. Just again getting a little bit too close to the action. I'm <laughs> not getting told off by a linesman, but when you go and cover women's games or non-league games at, at the third third division of women's football, non-league is obviously past the fifth the fifth tier, so you're pretty low down, and everyone in the ground can hear you, and everyone can hear exactly what you're saying, and everyone turns around to look at you when you're doing your report. And so that's again where you've really got to just believe in yourself sort of ignore everyone else around you and just crack on with your job do you ever did you ever get abuse from uh, any fans if they heard a bit of a uh, all the time all the time is it low all the time people will come up to me at half time on my way to you know 
if we're at half time, I go into the toilet at half time, um, and and someone will come up to me and say, I didn't, you know, what are you talking about, or you, you're talking, you're talking rubbish, and like, well, I'm I I'm saying what I'm seeing, and I'll stick by what I say. And I remember once at Alfredton Town, and I think a few of the uni boys were there as well, working for the club, BBC Radio Hereford or Herefordshire or something, and I was commentating on an Alfredton game because the visitors were from that part of the world and I called a goal that wasn't a goal um it hit the side netting I thought it went in and the manager turned around to me and said it wasn't an effing goal you know open your eyes and I had to apologize on the radio for this manager swearing so it happens mistakes happen as well that's a big thing up then what's that picked it up then he picked it up he heard it because at non-league level you're so close manager yeah you're so close to the dugouts that he they can hear you in non-league level so Yes, I've got that to look forward to this weekend. And uh, I think I'm at oh Belfort Town in the FA Trophy. So that's that's what my weekend has planned. That's what it has in store. Um, what, it, what it doesn't have in store, Max, um, is a fight yeah. that we're both massively, we were both massively looking forward to, um, alongside everyone else in boxing, that's no longer going to happen. It was the old British Conor Ben, Chris Eubank uh, catchweight clash on Saturday night, um, postponed after Conor Ben return adverse analytical findings for traces of the facility drug clomiphene. And that was in a voluntary anti-doping association drugs test. And the drug itself is on the uh, WADA ban list. Um, interestingly, though, the board don't acknowledge VADA. So cast your mind back to Billy Joe Saunders and, and you'll remember that he wasn't suspended. Um, so let's start with the very basics. What a shame, because this fight had the potential to be a blockbuster fight, one that people have paid really good money to go and see. And it's it, it's just on the whole so disappointing. It, I think, Max, it stains the sports integrity. Oh, massively, massively, you know. As you said, it's, it's such a highly anticipated for two ever since it got announced. And we've had some great, great British matchups uh, this year. Uh, Eubank Jr. in action earlier this year against Liam Williams. We've had Amir Khan versus Cal Brook, which is years overdue, but, you know, still had great off. And just to, you know, kind of probably take the title as best British match of uh, 2022, you know, it had everything. It had the boxers' abilities, who were both Eubank Jr. more so than Ben, kind of both near in a... Um, well, you had the narrative, the storyline, you know, the old families, them two being born rivals. And then you had one silly mistake to ruin it. And I do not know where Conor Ben goes from here. I don't know if he keeps pleading his innocence. I don't know if he is innocent. I highly doubt it. Um, well, that's how it. You, you... Say, you say silly mistake, but but the only thing I don't understand is this is a fertility drug. So I, I, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a chemist. I'm not a, a scientist. I don't, I don't understand how drugs work but how on earth does a fertility drug get in one system and if unless it has some sort of sports enhancing i don't know i, I don't know how how it even gets in this system. so yeah this um this this what is it Clem, clemophene i'll tell you I'll, I'll tell you i've got it in my notes it's clom- yeah. clomiphene is the name of the drug. clomiphene um so yeah it is meant for uh like ivf and for women's fertility but when taken by a male it can boost their testosterone i don't want to say i don't want to uh say this just in case it's incorrect source so like forgive me if i'm wrong but i've read that it can boost your testosterone levels by 200 times and that just sounds if that is true then it just shows that ben was there taking this to get the edge, you know, you say, say he's a clean athlete, but you got to look between the lines. Yeah. On surface level, this is a women's fertility um, substance, but there's a reason that it's banned and it's banned because it boosts your testosterone to ridiculous amounts. What? Like 200 times. Do you know? Like it's no coincidence. That's just ridiculous. That's a constant roid rage. I swear. Like Connor Ben would just be on one and it's, it's given him obviously given him an unfair advantage so to take this fight off Eddie Hun pushing for that to be fair like I've, I kind of feel for him because you know he had, he had him and Matchroom had a lot riding on this fight is is a huge do you, but why do you feel for him? For he, he, knew, he knew about this 
This this is where yeah, boxing. So, but I think this is where boxing falls short because if someone hadn't have leaked this fight, it would have gone ahead. If someone hadn't have leaked uh, this whole taking this fertility drug stuff, then the fight would have would have gone ahead. And, and God forbid something happens to Chris Eubank then, because that that's how flawed boxing is. That's how corrupt in a way boxing is. I, so in a way, I, I don't. I feel sorry for Chris Eubank. I don't know if I feel sorry for Eddie Eddie Hearn. No, just um, I was going to say, like, I still have lost respect for him in that sense. But in terms of like, I mean, I was hanging out with uh, a couple of matchroom staff that were here at the uni a couple of days ago, like from from the kind of top down. I feel sorry for them in a way, because one of them was literally on their way to the open workout. Um, yeah. Although he still could have gone because that's where Ben went to to plead his innocence as well. But um no, from sorry because just like I don't know, I don't know. I know that he, you know, had a, had a lot on this. I think Matrimo has been and the zone have been slightly declining over this year, not by numbers, but I just think by general consensus. I think he's lost a lot of fans. Um, so you know, yes, correct. You are correct in saying that um, Ben, him and Ben knew about this. Obviously, like obviously he knew about it too, but. So he could have prevented it in that sense, but it is also somebody, some athlete that he doesn't necessarily have control over. No, that, so, that's, that's true as well. An athlete has a control over their own body. At the end of the day, it's an athlete and their nutritionist, and and that's that. That's the bottom um, line of it. Turned down in that sense. Yeah, no, and that's and that's why I feel uh, feel a bit sorry for him. But I've I've lost a lot of respect for him. Um, if if it is true that he knew about it and. And didn't try to to change that. And uh, I think Frank, what you touched on earlier, I think Frank Warren, um, sorry, George Warren, I think it was Frank or George, George, I think son or George. senior, um, was saying, as, as you said, what if something happened to to Chris Eubank? So that is why, like, imagine, imagine Michael Watson in Eubank Junior.'s father's fight. You know, when senior. But I know I know senior wasn't on any banned substances then, but it, it could have gone, you know, it could have turned into a mauling if if that testosterone really helped and that PED really did give him the edge. Um and Ben carried his power and, and even more power. Like Eubank Jr. could I, I I still think he probably would have won the fight, but there is the possibility when taking a banned substance that the opponent is completely out matched hospitalized and had long-term injuries because of this fight i mean that is absolutely despicable that you would let the fight carry on full well knowing that i know they both wanted to but they're both warriors they're going to uh eubank jr in particular knowing that his opponent has tested uh for the banned substance and still carried on that's you can you can applaud it but if something did happen to him like everyone's to blame and it would just leave boxing in even more of a shambles than it's in right now. Well, that's it. You said Eddie Hearn's lost fans. I think boxing's lost fans. I think, I think the integrity of boxing is once again being thrown into disarray and it, it's unbelievably concerning that the lack of in football, you talk about player concern. Can you imagine if this has happened in football? It's the same in, in boxing, the, the welfare of an athlete and how ignorant people were to have even thought about, going ahead with this fight and when the BBC were, were questioning whether to to put this fight on or not and people were quite rightly saying well if you do then you could potentially you know you don't, you don't want to say it but if something terrible were to happen god forbid then that's that's when you have blood in your hands because you should have stopped this fight and that's that's why it's so worrying so sickening because it could have gone ahead very easily had someone have not leaked it to the daily mail and i, I think you say, you know, Eddie Hearn's lost fans. I think boxing's lost fans. Again, it's doing itself no favours like Carl Frampton says. Here's what he said on Twitter. Boxing does itself no favours. There should be no grey areas. If you fail to test, you're banned. And in my opinion, you should be banned for life. And I agree with Frampton. Frampton. I think he has a point. Um, I know Ben's been, like you said, very strong and telling the world how clean he is. But whether it's a fertility drug or any other drug, whether it was accidental or not, he's broken the rules. These tests are 99.999% accurate. Uh, it'll get sample B tested. That's the other thing I don't understand why sample B is going to take so much time to come back. But that's the thing. yeah, I don't get that. But at the end of the day, I I don't understand why this fight is hasn't just been scrapped or why 
Ben hasn't been punished because Vader doesn't count for anything. And why doesn't Vader count for anything? To me, there are just so many hurdles, so many kind of stuff. There's so much you have to go through. It should just be as simple as if you fail a drugs test, you fail a drugs test, that's it. You're, you're banned or you're suspended. That's my view on it. Yeah, and you're completely right, mate. I think these, you know, we've spoken about other topics in sport um, that is kind of detrimental to the sport and how how little tolerance should be taken for it. You know, when we've, we've touched on things like, um, I don't want to compare the two, but just, you know, for example, like racism, mm. how we say if you get, like, if, if any fans are uh, found for making racist remarks, they need the utmost, the bit like... The biggest, you know, you need to be making examples out of these people. But I think what you were saying with the um, the the drug testing and, and Vada, and you got loads of different ones. I think it is pretty much a summary of boxing right now in terms of fragmentation. Like titles, you have about three or four different ones in a division, and you know you even have that with with drug testing companies now. Um, Vada picked it up, and if it was with a different company, I don't, I I think other companies tested him, if I'm not mistaken, and nothing came through. So if Vada didn't pick it up, then this, as you said, this fight could still be going on. And like that is just, just mind blowing to me because it should, there should be one universally recognized, which I think if it, if it has the ability to pick up things like that, it should be Vada. Um, company that has the highest success rate. I'm making an example out of these fighters. I know it's only there to, you know, see if they get results, but the BBBFC should be going to Conor Ben now. And I think we might see it over the coming days. We need to find what consequence he's going to receive because his consequence can't just be a postponement of his fight. Anyone gets that. Lee Wood just had that the other, Lee Wood, a perfectly clean athlete, had that the other week just from an injury. So that, yeah, that's a punishment for an injury, not for a fa- Failed drug. It's a shame because I don't I don't want to have to say this about Conor Ben. I was excited for him, looking forward to him fighting, and I, I was a fan until the other day. But now that's the most that's he's the most like a Jarrell Miller. That that's it as well. Everyone was looking forward to this fight. My dad phoned and was asking what we'd be talking about on the podcast. And every every week I phoned I phoned him and we talked to him and he asked about he asked about you and, and asked about the podcast. And he said, yeah, are you talking about Joshua Fury? I said, honestly, no, because I don't think anyone's really that interested because everyone's so past it. What people are interested in is this massive fight coming up on Saturday night. It's a British catchweight fight. Ben Eubank is what people want to hear about. It's what people enjoy. And it's 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 a hot topic. And yet he, he goes and blows it for himself, Connor Ben. I, I don't... It's very hard to to judge if, if someone's innocent on something like this because I have no no expertise in, in drugs and, and drug taking or, or whatever in that regard, in any regard, but in that, in that, in yeah. that regard. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, it's hard to, to put an opinion on it, but I put it out to Instagram yesterday. 86% of, of my followers agreed that the decision was correct. I certainly do. I think if there's any element of doubt in boxing, then a fight has to be scrapped. And that for me is the bottom line. Um, interestingly, Eddie Hearn said he wouldn't promote the fight on foreign soil because there was that option. I mean, cast your mind back to David H. Chisora back in the day they fought in Luxembourg. Um, would you have wanted that, Max? Per- because, because personally, I, I don't really care now. I don't, I don't want to see this fight anymore. I, I think no. I, I think he's tarnished it for himself. Um, I, I'd be watching it only to see how Chris Eubank does, who I feel very sorry for. Uh, not, you know, He's earning plenty of money anyway. This is a great PR for him. He comes out, like you said, I think like we, you said on Twitter and like we were talking about in the week, it's win-win for you, Bank. He comes out as, as the victor either way. But, but I still feel sorry for him because he didn't get his chance to come out of the shadow he's been in for 30 years. This was their chance for both of them, like you said earlier, to, to make their own headlines, to make their own titles. And, and he hasn't got that. So would, would you have liked to have seen that fight in Luxembourg? No. Literally, do not give me this fight until both of them are. I know that they are clean athletes. It's just anything else is just like just shouldn't should not happen. There should be no other option. There should be no when they are clean and they should be doing it in Britain because 
you can't have oh the, the best British fight of 2022 was Luxembourg. You can't have that. I know, I know. As a, you know, we talk about uh, Joshua Fury and potential venues for that, and you know, you've got the classic Saudi Arabia's always won, and you know, Fury likes to fight in America. Um, that's a little different, but for these, you know, this is kind of the British heritage of boxing. Fury and Joshua didn't have fathers that were rivals back in the day, so you know, it's, it's very synonymous uh, with our country and, and should be there, but only there until these guys are both clean. And yeah, I feel so sorry for Chris Eubank. If you told me. You know, months ago when this this fight got announced, that I would come out of this, prefer- I would put you in a psychiatric ward because <laughs> that is that that was never my mindset until a few days ago. But now you just you do have to feel for Chris because he's drained his body to get to a weight that he hasn't been at in years. Dehydrated almost ever in his career. Yeah, exactly. Dehydrated, destroyed drained. himself. And then gets it thrown back in his face. Um, I had to, I had to go on a sex ban apparently for two weeks as well. It's, it's terrible. <laughs> it's really bad. Um, let me so read unfortunate. you. It's, honestly, I, feel, I do feel for the guy. Let me read you his statement. Um, here's what he said on Twitter. Uh, let's have a look. I think I've got it somewhere. So here's the statement. Yeah, Connor got caught using an illegal substance to the fighters off. Can't believe it. I really apologize to the fans and everyone that bought tickets, traveled and booked hotels. This should not have happened. He's escaped his schooling, dot, 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 for now. So that was the statement on Twitter. Um, the, the other question is, why can't they bring in someone else? I know it's short notice, but I remember, and, and I know it's a different scale and a completely different caliber of fish, but I remember covering or being part of the build-up to Fraser Clark's debut with BBC Radio Derby. And um, the, the opponent pulled out very last minute. I think it was literally 24, 24 25 hours before. And essentially what happened was they found a fan who was at the press conference who had some kind of amateur uh, background in boxing, some journeyman boxing background. And the guy was Jake Darnell. And um, surely enough, they pulled the fight off. So why can't Wazaman go and find someone else for Eubank? Give him the chance. Give him Jake Paul, who he's called out on Twitter. He he, he wants to fight Jake Paul. Why not? Get out. Jake Paul would fly over. Massive payday for both of them. Can't they get another opponent for you, Bang? Do you think he'd want one? He clearly does. Yeah, that would uh, that would be a good chat. Um, but yeah, I remember actually. Um, God, that was a few episodes back, wasn't it? We were talking yeah. about the the Fraser Clark story, and that I love that because that is just real kind of local, like blue collar type of stuff. That yeah. is, yeah, it's it's really good. I, I love that story, but um. If we if we are going to mention Jake Paul, he, he would never take that fight. Um, one because it's actually someone who can box, and two because he hasn't had enough weeks to talk absolute crap and just spout <laughs> over on Twitter. He doesn't have enough momentum going into it because that's all this is for him. It's just momentum and PR. It's so um, he he would he would just be scared from uh, getting in the ring there for tomorrow, but. I feel a level and you want to prove yourself. I think I think Wasserman have loads of options. I think people, fighters, would have seen this the other day that Ben's uh tested positive and sent emails, calls off straight away. Agents Let me come in as a replacement. Agents would have been in there it's the second it happened. Definitely. But I mean, it depends now. I think this 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 new age of boxing, fighters would be like, no, I you know, I don't, don't want to take on the uh like a new challenge after preparing for this, this real amateurs used to do anyway, they would, you know, they wouldn't know their opponent until they get in the ring with them. So if they, if they want to, you know, Chris wants to roll back the years to uh, amateur days, then if he did have much amateur experience anyway, um, then he could do that and just get in the ring with someone unknown. But I think, I don't know, really know where the stock is for that to get in with someone relatively unknown because, it's well, just again, gonna. It'll about, probably be him winning. Well, there are two. There are two elements to this. What one element is you talk about danger in sport, and and I've said it so many times. One day something terrible will happen in YouTube boxing. Um, but at the same time, obviously Eubank would carry would carry Jake Paul I don't know, five six rounds to to give the fans some value for money to to stay in the ring and to earn as much money as possible from being on telly. Um, but but yeah. I, Will it happen? Probably not. It's most likely just PR between Chris and Jake Paul and good on them both. They're using their platforms and 
they're striking whilst the iron is still hot. So there you go, Chris Eubank, Connor Ben, not happening. Um, a, a real disappointment, a real disgrace. I think a lot of people have a lot to think about the, the, the way they've, they've showed boxing, the light they've put the sport in. It's just, it, it's terrible. It really, really is bad. Um, but let's move on very, very quickly and very quickly touch on Devin Haney, George Cambosas Jr. It's a week away, but it would still be rude not to tease this potential super fight for the IBF World Lightweight Championship, WBA Super World Lightweight Championship, WBC World Lightweight Championship, and WBO World Lightweight Championship belt in Melbourne next week. Um, I've read articles, I've watched interviews. It looks to me like Cambosas has lived in the gym. A uh, comfortable win for Haney last time round, but I think it'll be more of a challenge against a hungry looking Cambosas. What do you reckon, Max? I think we'll have to see, yeah. Um, this one's for all the marbles, and I absolutely love that. The more, uh, you know, undisputed heavyweight champion can be tested and, and fights, I'm absolutely here for it. You know, undisputing, making boxing undisputed and, and people aiming to achieve that and then contesting it as well is what I want to see happening is, is the good takeaways from the sport, you know, which is currently getting outweighed by shambolic catastrophes Again, like we've just spoken about. Exactly. But that, there is yeah. still light to it. And that's that's sort of why I wanted to end the podcast on a, a little bit more of a positive note, because I, I don't want this to be a doom and gloom podcast about boxing where we shine a light on the bad, the bad side of the sport, the corrupt and, and darker side of what is such, it's such a brilliant sport, such an art form in its own way. And so very, very quickly, we'll end it on this note, um, a bit of an excuse again to talk about this fight, but it's been announced that the winner of Clarissa Shields versus Savannah Marshall will be awarded the new WBC Elizabethan belt. So what a fight we have to look forward to at the O2, Max. Uh, it's a rearrangement. And again, it's, I think it's next week, but we can, we can talk, we can touch on it now very quickly. It'll be a great fight. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as you said, Haney Cam Bosa, but, you know, that being followed up with Shields Marshall, we got a great schedule ahead of us. And then you got Alicia Bumgarner and um, Michaela Meyer on the undercard of that. I still believe that fight's on, um, which I think is undisputed or is like one title away from undisputed. And then, you know, Shields and Marshall is so massive moves happening um, in the women's side of things, which is great to see. And yeah, ho hopefully Marshall, as, as a fellow Brit, hopefully Marshall can get the job done. But she might be in a in over a head with a... A, a shield that is just in her prime and, and making moves. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. But as you said, great things to come. Hopefully we can move on past this now. Hopefully an example can be made. Um, uh, a stone unboxing and hopefully we can get on, finish, you know, finish the year with, uh, with some positive, good competitive fights. Well, there you go. S summed up in a nutshell by our resident boxing expert, Max Taylor. And it's <laughs> great to chat with you as always. And, and I think that brings us to the end of the podcast. So, We've touched on the goods and bads of boxing as, as we usually do. Um, I think this week's story with Conor Ben and Chris Eubank has been monumental. It was blown out of the water and, and quite rightly so. And it's going to be fascinating to see where this fight goes. Some big guests coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, two big guests secured, both from the other side across the pond. So it'll be great to have uh, some different accents on as well. But from the middlemen, from me, uh, this weekend just have a great weekend have a great weekend uh, enjoy what boxing there is to offer enjoy the football enjoy the sport get outside if you can not too cloudy not too rainy and uh, have a great <laughs> weekend over here in the uk for once but yeah no uh, absolute pleasure talking boxing with you and uh looking forward to actually hosting some guests as well it's, it's been a long time coming and uh, we've got some great boxing minds to come on and speak with us as well so i'm looking forward to that um and for you guys yeah you get a get a nice little change up from uh, <laughs> from our two Joni voices. So yeah, some, some new guys coming on and uh, really excited for it. So stay tuned and uh, we'll see you soon.